This week we are finally sailing to the most iconic Brazilian city. So beautiful! Rio de Janeiro. Finally at Rio de Janeiro! I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And after two years bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life, it's finally time to start exploring. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Sunday for a new episode. Sailing today! We're gonna go today to Rio de Janeiro. I don't know if you guys know this city, but mm -hmm. it's probably like for foreigners, it's the most famous city of Brazil. And it's gonna be the first time that's gonna be just the two of us. Yeah! And also I have really, really, really cool news. Yeah, from now on we're gonna do longer and longer crossings. And in the end of the year we plan to cross from Brazil to the Caribbean, that is a 2200 nautical miles crossing that can be like 18 days, maybe 20 days. And for that I think it's really important to have someone on shore that can take care of us, that knows about weather and that we can trust, that we can rely on, that's gonna be there anytime we need to help us. And this week we finally found the right person. I don't know if you guys remember Felipe, the shower guy. When we met Felipe, he mentioned that he's a really good friend with Giovanni. He's a doctor on meteorology, but also he's a sailor, so he loves to give support on crossings. And I think he's the perfect guy to do the job. And together with Felipe, they can, you know, be our support because whenever one is not online, the other one is online. And we, when we need support on meteorology, we have Giovanni. And this day was the first meeting, the three of us, so we can start to, you know, get along together and start working together. Because even though right now, is a short crossing that we don't really need short support. I think it's important to start earlier so we start talking the same language and whenever the long crossing comes, we are already, you know, working together in a way that we don't even need to think, it's just natural. Our last sunset in Ilha Grande, for sure we are gonna miss this place. We are doing the last finishings on the boat, we are getting the boat ready for leaving, the engine is on. Yeah, we're just warming up the engine so we can check oil. Exactly, let's predict it. The wind came, let's we just wait and monitor because here the island has a lot of hills and the wind has, I don't know how we call it in English, in Portuguese we call vortex, may, might be the same thing. So basically the wind goes down the hill and can accelerate, accelerate a lot. We're gonna wait a little bit because there's no need to, you know, leave on 30 knots of wind if you can leave on 20 and sail anyways on a good speed and make there on the proper time. Seems that it's time to go. Yeah, it's almost one in the morning. It's even hard to express the feeling of starting a sail to Rio de Janeiro. Let's go to Rio and we show you what I mean when we get there because it's gonna be special. Race anchor. Finally sailing, that's so good. We actually didn't miss the wind, so right now we're doing four and a half. We're really reefing because here inside the bay there is a lot of little rocks, little island. I'm excited. I just love when we actually make the right decision. This day we were supposed to leave at 8 p.m. But then talking to Giovanni, he's like, yeah, at 8 p.m. the wind might start increasing and maybe it's gonna reach like 30, 35 knots. And in the region we were with a lot of hills around, 35 knots can become 40, 45 knots of gusts. And to be honest, I don't think we need to sail in between islands during the night with 45 knots of gusts on our first night sail together. I think we should play safe. And we together as a team decided it was smart to wait for the highest wind to pass. And that's what we did. We decided to wait and that was absolutely the right decision. Take off the layers. Life jacket. This jacket. This one. Now I need to put this one back for now. Now let's talk about pants. Shoes out. I'm gonna stay like this for now. <laughs> Ready? It's a pity that we can't see much of the city as it's a little bit foggy today but it's amazing how when you come by boat to a city that you already came by car 15 years ago but I've been here the geography seems to be different we have been passing Barra da Tijuca for around two hours it's pretty cool actually I don't recognize any place here, I just recognize from TV because Rio in Brazil, most of the sun poppers are recording in Rio and in Sao Paulo so yeah. you've seen the city on the TV, it's cool I just recognize that place right there from TV, that's pretty awesome 
Arriving in Rio by Sailboat, even being Brazilians, made us feel like foreigners. So, I guess we need a different voice for this voiceover. Rio de Janeiro is the main tourist destination in the Southern Hemisphere, and I guess the main Brazilian postcard. We can see from here the biggest favela in Brazil. There are more than 100,000 people living there. It's a behind this hill here. Rio is actually the city with the largest number of people living in slums across Brazil. To give you an idea, if all favela residents in Rio formed a separate city, it would be the 12th largest Brazilian city in population. And from here we also can see Pedra da Gávea, that this hill that is 844 meters high and a lot of people go hang gliding as Duca said, it's an old school way of flying. Right there, the first view of the Christ. Before we arrive in Rio, we want to remember you that we are gonna be at the Annapolis Boat Show next month on the YouTube singing channel booth. Yeah, and we hope we see you guys there. It's gonna be just awesome. But also, we want to ask you for a favor. Of course, you know, we're friends, we need a favor. During the boat show, there's gonna be an award and we've been nominated for both best YouTube sailing channel and for best YouTube episode. And in order to win that, we need your vote. It's really simple, it won't take long. We're gonna leave two links on the first comment of this video and you just click on the link and you vote for Odd Life Crafting, awesome channel. And then you go to our email and you confirm the vote because if you don't confirm on the email, it won't count. Guys, thanks so much. We really, really, really appreciate your support. It means a lot to us, but now we need to go back to the episode. Let's go back to Rio. Back to Rio. It's even hard to describe the feeling of arriving in Rio for the first time by boat. That's just so amazing. Thanks, babe. That's just so pretty. Check this out. Sugar loaf right there. The lift is right there. And my baby is right here. <laughs> On oh, odd, that's just amazing, awesome, awesome, awesome. By the way, I'm really proud of Obera. We did our first night shift. That's really cool. We've been living on board for over almost, I, I would say almost a year now, and we never say just the two of us alone during the night and did night shift. And today was the first. Yeah. <laughs> Another cool thing about coming by boat is that you can see the city through another point of view. So look at this rock. It's amazing! Arriving to a new place, I have never been to this area, this is called Niterói. The reason why we didn't go to Rio, that's just across the bay, straight is because we wanted to meet this couple that we know only from Instagram and they are refitting a metal boat also so you know we have something in common and they are setting sail tomorrow to go south to finish the interior of the boat on the same town as Yaba and we want to meet them before they leave because they leave tomorrow so we're gonna spend one night here and then tomorrow we go to Rio now let's get the dinghy on the water we made it check this out that's so cool. You recognize this guy? Long time don't see you, my friend. We hear from you guys so many times saying that you miss our old boatyard days. And to be honest, we do understand because sometimes we also have that feeling. So if you need a fix and if you need to watch some boat transformation, this friend of ours just started a new YouTube channel and they're gonna be posting this insane transformation. And we think you're gonna love that. So the idea is to use their outboard on our dinghy to tow Lahakai to another place. <laughs> Here we go! It's about time to go to the city of Rio de Janeiro. So you see what I've been telling you. It's nothing like it seems to 
what I've been telling you Oh, you'd learn what I mean if you can't Pão de açúcar em Cristo Redentor Driving at Rio de Janeiro Today is Saturday and the city of Rio is so busy with people outside enjoying this beautiful day, sunny day This is so cool Finally at Rio de Janeiro it's one of the places in our whole trip that we were like willing to get to and we can't wait to explore Cocoroca Cocoroca Veleiro Odi na Escuta, câmbio Support is coming because there are so many more bulls that we have no idea which one is ours so the club is sending a dinghy to support us and to show where we should go. They have a partnership with the yacht club that we are partners with, so we can stay here for one month. Yeah, that's the reason why we are here, is because everywhere you go, if there is possibility of using the partnership program from our yacht club, of course you're going to use it because it's a safe place, we can leave the boat. Now we just need to wait for the guys. They don't have any boy available right now to come into the administration to check how we can do it. Luckily we have friends, our friend contact his friend and the friend of his friend has a pointer here so we can use it. We have great news. <laughs> Yeah, this is a radio that we bought six months ago and ever since we could never use this radio and the reason for that is because when you turn on the radio it asks for the MMSI number and until today we had no MMSI until but today. now we do have one <laughs> yes we had some comments saying how can you guys take like six months to get an MMSI number in the US or in Europe or wherever it's like Minutes. One one day you have the number. Minutes. In Brazil it's not like that. It took like six months, but we, we do it. have a number now. <laughs> so now I'm gonna try to enter our MMSI number that's on the computer. Oh, it's getting much better. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Successfully. Finally. Oh. Already working. We just need to learn how to use yeah. this. <laughs> We're gonna study this a little bit more, but we do have a radio. That's just so awesome. That's so good. We do have an. MMSI number on this radio, right? So this stress working. Check one last thing. So now we have another two place we need to add the MMSI. One is the AIS that is inside here, and second the EPUB. We're doing good. So now I already managed to connect the AIS to the computer, and I already download the software. Basically, I need to tell here is the, the shipping name, the calling name, the MMSI. Yeah. So I'm just gonna do this and see what happens. Supposedly we have good news. Seems like. All the systems are working. Green, green, green. Seems like we have AIS working. Check. That's awesome. We are gonna have a day off today, but we have a task of the day. <laughs> Which yeah. one? In order of to have a day off, we need, you know, one task is just like enough for you to feel like I accomplished something. And we're gonna accomplish something really little but really big. It's been months we want to install our EPIRB in place. The reason why we didn't install yet is because we didn't have our MMSI number that just arrived two days ago. So with the MMSI, I already registered the EPIRB to our boat. So now if we you know, need rescue, it's gonna say, oh, it needs rescue and that's pretty good. Hope we never need to use this. <laughs> Hope not, but you know, better safe than sorry. So this we're gonna install here so we can get and leave. It's gonna be easier. Basically this is a floating device that has a GPS antenna inside and also I guess a VHF antenna. And this will transmit in case of emergency if we sink the boat. This is gonna be with us on the life raft. And this can float and last for I think like two days the battery. And it's gonna, you know, send alarms to a lot of stations around the world close to this one so we can get rescue so basically it's a device that you need to have but you wish you hope you never use that 
that was a lot of work. This task today <laughs> took hours to get a cool. Yeah, that, that was. All. I, I think we deserve some break now, right? Three screws. <laughs> yeah, but we are free to explore now, aren't we? Yeah, we do. This is the best tour of the city. <laughs> As we are on the yacht club, we have the support, the shore support. It's pretty cool. It's 24 hours. It's very cool. There's art. And there's the Ponda Suka. And there's. And we have the Christ there. It's the best view of the city. Pretty good. Just so you don't get confused, this is Ivan, our friend from our hometown. We are gonna have lunch in the marina. There is a really cheap restaurant in the end of the marina. We have been eating this restaurant every, every day. single day. If you eat 660 grams, <laughs> you pay three dollars. Three dollars. Fifteen reais. And after that, we are gonna rent a bicycle and just ride the bicycle through the city. Here we go. The goal is to arrive there. Let's go. I guess that's it. Yeah, we arrived. Go. This is the botanic garden, so we need to assess the botanic garden to get to the other side to see how to go to the Christ. But I just bought a new castle for me. There are some spider nets, but it's all good. We can <laughs> clean it. Yeah, if we could refit a boat, we can refit a castle next, right? Oh, that's next project. Nice. We need to book the visit and it's just Monday that's, that's available. Crazy! Today is <laughs> Friday. We're gonna be out of Rio by Monday probably. Uber on the way. So we thought the Uber would take us all the way up the hill, but no, it took us to a place that we're gonna take a train. But it's cool, we're gonna take a train ride all the way up the hill to see the Christ. Guess we made it. <laughs> it's right there. Who has never seen this image? If you didn't, this is the statue of Christ the Redeemer and it was elected one of the seven wonders of the world. The statue came from France to Brazil in pieces. The head alone consisted of 50 pieces and altogether it became a 98 feet tall and it's the largest Art Deco statue in the world. Inaugurated in 1931, Christ the Redeemer statue was financed by Brazilians, designed by a Frenchman and built from Swedish stones. It's much bigger than I thought. So busy, so many people. And this is the low season. <laughs> the low season is not low season. I guess we made it. Is it big? It's huge! It's amazing the size of this statue. I have no idea it was this big. I mean, I come, I came here once when I was five. It's been way too long, I don't remember. Let's try to find out. It's really busy. Everyone seems to be wanting to find art. Everyone's trying to find art. We can see odd all the way down there. It's funny. It's, see, that's why we like the orange color. We actually can see from all the way up here. We can see odd right there. It's right there. Oh. What's behind us? Hey, I know what he's saying. The guy up there is saying, finally. He's opening his arms and saying, finally. Enough of this big guy. The day is beautiful. Look at that. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful anchorage. But of course, we have trouble, right? You have a boat, you have problems. There's an airplane right now. So last week, two times when I started the engine, it died out of nowhere, like right when I started. And I'm like, that's weird, but yeah, it worked right after. And now we tried to start the engine after a week. And that's what happened. 
Yeah, so of course we need to find out what's the problem. We're gonna work this out. Luckily, the cold front that was supposed to be tomorrow night is just went to the ocean, so we're not leaving tomorrow night. Otherwise, we're gonna be in a really huge hurry. We are basically in Rio waiting for a good cold front because we have like a two and a half day sail. Yeah, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You need to troubleshoot and try to find this problem because we cannot leave here with the engine not working. So the next step on the troubleshoot is to try to start the engine without the panel. And the way to do that is to disconnect this white wire and we run a wire from that terminal all the way to the battery. And supposedly if we have 12 volts on the white wire, we are gonna start the engine. So bad news, it happened exactly the same thing. So it's getting out of our knowledge right now. Luckily, there is a Yammer authorized center right on the Yacht Club where we are right now. So I can talk to him today. So let's hope we can fix this quick. So I have good news, bad news and good news. So good news is we talked to the mechanic and he's gonna be able to come to Odd today to check our engine. But I cannot touch the motor. I cannot take apart and take to him. He needs to come to the boat otherwise you know, I might lose my warranty and the engine is still under warranty, so let's just guarantee we stick with the warranty. But while we do that, we have good news, another good news. Something arrived. It's gonna be a surprise. Can you pause the video and just guess what's on this box? Let's see if you guess right. We have a new autopilot. As you guys know, we've been having trouble with the autopilot. We have now a really strong quadrant. We have a really strong support for the autopilot, but we still have our old autopilot that is, I believe right now, the weak link of the system. That autopilot is supposed to be installed 25 centimeters from the center of the shaft of the rudder. It's installed on 21 centimeters. And the reason for that is because the arm is not long enough and that's how we can manage to install that. So this new autopilot though, it's meant to be on 21 centimeters. That's exactly the position that we can install on our system. And then we're gonna use this one as our main autopilot and that one's gonna be just a secondary unit that if this one one day breaks, we have the spare one. That's gonna be just awesome. Can't wait to see this working actually. Me too. The mechanic arrived. Can you hear that? Is that good? Usually I hate this sound, but today is a good sound. It sounds like <laughs> music. The engine is working. I love when I, I sound stupid. I didn't believe the battery was the problem because I thought the voltage that was showing was enough. And the guy said, no, that's not enough voltage. So we started the engine with the emergency button. We have an emergency button that we join the banks, the house and the engine bank. That means the lithium battery started the engine and the starter motor is perfect. So the problem is much simpler than I thought. We just need to replace the battery of the boat. Good morning. I think I mentioned already the other day, this extension VHF radio for the external part of the boat stopped working. The radio itself is working, but it's not charging. Good news. ENG is sending another radio today. Tomorrow we're gonna know if we need a new radio or if this is gonna be fixed. So let's start doing something else. Someone is bringing a new battery for this starter battery of the engine. I'm gonna take off the engine battery that's really heavy. New battery right now. That's it. New battery in place. The negative is on. Positive is on. Wish us luck. Yay. Yay! Great news. Now we're almost ready to set sail. I mean, we are pretty much ready. We just need the south wind. Right now it's like north wind, north wind, north wind. Eventually the south wind is gonna come. Let's hope so. We'll see you guys next Sunday, but before you go, don't forget to vote for us. And if you go to Annapolis next month, don't forget to stop by the YouTube sailing channel booth yeah. because you can buy these Our beautiful new t-shirts that's <laughs> just gonna be available in person on the boat show. See, see you guys, guys in Annapolis. There.